Welcome back to another Alvado video. I planned on watching a game on the new patch and talking about a lot of the changes in this video. But the issue with that is that they actually delayed the patch by one day. So instead of analyzing a game on the previous patch, I'm just going to give you my takes on what I think is going to be strong on the upcoming patch and what we can expect to see. With how game changing this patch is expected to be, there really are not that many changes. You can see that in the buffs, only five champions were buffed, and in the nerfs, Draven got nerfed, but he doesn't show up in the nerfs here. But yeah, only six champions got altered, and a lot of the changes have to deal with like bigger overarching systematic changes. And considering they didn't nerf that many units, you can expect to see a lot of the same comps that are really strong continue to be strong. For example, Belveth didn't get touched, and the thing is, is that since we have four re hero augment rerolls, that means if you're playing around Belveth and you get shown and you get shown a four cost hero augment, there's a really high chance that you're going to be able to get back for blood, which is easily one of the strongest hero augments in the game right now, especially, you know, if you're playing around this type of threat board, even if you're not playing around this type of threat board, if you just have AD items, there's a good chance you see, you know, three cost, four cost, four cost on three, two. And you're thinking, man, I have four rolls. I get to see eight of these hero augments. There's a good chance I'm just going to be able to get Belveth here. And then you just reroll for Belveth. You hit Belveth. And then now you already have, you know, one of the strongest units in the game with one of the strongest hero augments in the game with good items. And then you can, can, can and then you can continue to build your board around that. Uh, other comps that are going to continue to be really strong, you know, Viego, Aphelios, Viego was already a really strong comp. Now that Aphelios is really strong, it's really easy to understand how to cap your board in this comp now because, you know, you get three item Viego, you get some support items, and then when you find Aphelios, you try and build towards uh, AD items on Aphelios. Now, this comp doesn't have any like game breaking hero augments, but the thing is that it, it has significantly, uh, it has like a really high number of good hero augments. You know, there's a, a a lot of the units on the board that you're playing around have augments that are very beneficial to this comp. So because there's four hero augment rerolls, if you're ever playing around Viego, it's going to be really hard to get a bad hero augment at every single stage of the game. Now, this Samira comp is, um, again, you know, not a single unit got nerfed. So this comp is going to be really strong. This comp has the easiest time transitioning into your capped Aphelios board, which is easily the strongest board to win games with, by far the most consistent. You don't need any specific hero augments, regular augments, you know, anything to go your way. The only thing that you need to do is just be able to hit level 9, which obviously, you know, that's like a pretty hefty task. But if you are able to turn a high roll into a level 9 spot and you're able to roll gold down, then, you know, playing Samira into Aphelios is, you know, you know, this is this is one of the strongest comps in the game right now. You're going to get a lot of first place if you're able to hit this and not really much about it has changed. Now, here are some comps that we've seen before we can continue to expect to see. But what about new emerging comps? OK, so considering the rework to Gadgety and you can't see it here, but in the patch notes, it is now Gadgetine's gain, 3% bonus damage, 3% uh, like damage amp and 3% damage reduction per item at 3 Gadgetine. So if you have 3 items, that's 9%. If you have 5 Gadgetine, and if you have a 3 item Gadgetine unit, then they get 20, uh, they get 36% damage bonus and 36% damage reduction. Now, if that doesn't sound broken, then yeah, I don't know. This, I think, uh, they... <laughs> You know, Gadgetine 5 has seen very little play because of how weak it is. And I can tell you right now, this is probably the strongest trait in the game right now. If you get a 3 item Nunu, uh, that unit is going to be beyond broken. Damage reduction is by far one of the most difficult uh, aspects of the game of TFT to balance. And it's always, you know, it always pales some issues. So how can we get to the spot where we can hit five Gadgetine and try to abuse uh, the new buffed Gadgetine? Well, I have this kind of amalgamation of a board right here, and this obviously is not like the entirety of the board. But the idea is you just play around 
um, you know, gadgetines in the early game. This is kind of what you uh, have on your board. When you hit Zoe, you move your items to Zoe. When you upgrade your board, you know, you look to try and find Echo and Alistar. And you're probably playing LeBlanc on your board to help Zoe and Annie. And then as soon as you find Nunu, you transfer your items from Poppy to Nunu. And then your final unit is going to be either Belveth or Zed. Now, a lot of the Gadgetine items are strong, but the issue is that if you ever find like a Gadgetine RFC or a Gadgetine uh, Bloodthirster, those items are pretty hard to utilize. Most of the time you end up just putting RFC on Zoe and Bloodthirster on Annie if you have to play around Gadgetine, but you're never really happy to see either of those. But so, so now, um, since since you can realistically play Gadgetine in the late uh, in the late game because of the you know the benefit that it gives you, you can easily make use out of both of these items with either Zed or Belveth, and um, any extra 80 items you can put on these units, you're almost always going to have you know some unit that you can utilize uh, items on for this board. The extra AP can go on either Zoe or Nunu. Extra tank items can go on Echo. If you do not find Nunu, then you know you can always just put your tank items on Echo and then choose to play Poppy over Nunu. Uh, but obviously, you know you you really want to hit that Nunu. It gives you mascot. He's significantly stronger than Poppy. Um, and then yeah, and then this is eight units though. So if you don't have Belveth, I mean if you don't have either Zed or Belveth, you can always choose to just play an extra Aegis. You can always choose to just play three Prankster. Uh, you can, if the admin is really strong, you can always choose to just play an extra admin. There's a lot of uh, extra units that you can play in this spot. I mean, you honestly could play Zed and Belveth. I mean, I don't know if that would be good, but if for some reason you're rolling a lot of gold on level eight, um, and you happen to hit like a Zed two and a Belveth two, then you know you realistically could like play this board as well. Zed, um, you know, you're getting the three hacker with Zed. Belveth is just a really strong unit. And so I think this by far is going to be like the easiest way to abuse um, Gadgetine if you're playing around the three. Now, the issue with playing around the five is that you have to hit Nunu in order to get five while also having, you know, Poppy and Lulu on your board. And the issue with this is that it's going to be really difficult to get to the spot where you can play Nunu if you're trying to like utilize Poppy and Lulu, especially if you have Poppy and Lulu uh, on your board since the beginning of the game and you like have your items on it. Because if this is what your items look like and you need to like keep these units on your board and you don't want to like get rid of them, then that means you're carrying a Lulu and you're carrying a Poppy, which is like not really what you want. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people have been, have brought up the fact that you can, you can do like a Gadgetine reroll, but then that also, like, the issue with this is also what happens when, you know, you spend the entirety of the game on level 4 and level 5, and then you're never going to get to the spot where you're going to hit the Nunu. So I do not think that the Gadgetine reroll is going to be something that you should go for. I think if you do get a Gadgetine heart, then that is the one spot that you can try and go for it, because... It is really easy to hit five from that spot. All you do is just hit Zoe. So if you hit Gadgetine Heart as your first augment, it gives you an Annie. Uh, you just reroll Lulu and Poppy. Lulu three and Annie three with three with a 36% damage reduction with 36% damage bonus and 36% damage reduction is insane. This is kind of like the the board that you probably really would play with this anyways. And then whenever you find a Nunu, then you can just like replace either Annie or Zoe, depending on whichever one you want to. So the next comp that I want to talk about that is going to be a quote unquote new comp, which is definitely not new. I'm sure you've seen it before, but it is of course the Nyla Yumi reroll build, Super's Nyla. Now, why is why am I talking about this? Because I feel like this comp, you know, you you definitely have seen it before. It's already known to be really strong. The issue with this comp is that a lot of people, I think, if they are going to be playing it, they play it from an incorrect spot because they don't have, you know, the right hero augment to play the comp for. This comp becomes significantly more powerful when you have, you know, one of these hero augments that I'm showing here. 
but of course you can always play predatory precision you can play the lease and carry hero augments um which means that you can also play the other nyla uh, the nyla support hero augments so that leaves you you know six hero augments that are all that are all like really strong in this comp now it without one of those the, the comp becomes significantly worse which is why you probably don't see that much of the comp i mean maybe you see this comp a lot who knows um i've definitely seen like a lot of people play it but it's not um for how strong the comp it is for how strong the comp is it's not as popular as you might think but now that you have four hero augment rerolls, if you are ever shown a two cost or a three cost hero augment and you have items that resemble uh, good items for this comp people are going to be hard forcing this way more because of how consistently you can now hit any of these hero augments you want if you're able to tailor your board on 3-2, there's a lot of people that they might even just like full open on stage 2 and then figure out a proper unit combination to uh, look for to put in on 3-1 that basically guarantees them one of these augments and then you can actually like make this a consistent game plan where instead of, you know, praying that you hit uh, one of these augments when uh, there's like a, a low chance to you can yeah like you can le legitimately just probably consistently play this comp every game and always hit you know one of the hero augments that you want and for the next comp it's not going to be about which comp is new and emerging it's going to be the exact opposite and that is of course the vertical laser core comp that we all know and love now i kind of just threw some random like generally good items on this comp and obviously, you know, the the way that you play around this comp is going to be a lot differently, considering that Laser Core is now a 3579 trait. So instead of having to hit both Zed and Sejuani on, you know, your level 7 rolldown, you're only going to have to hit one of them if you want to play 5. Now, obviously, 5 is going to be weaker than 6, um, but 5 is obviously also going to be a lot stronger than three so it's going to be easier to stabilize around them but the reason why i want to talk about this comp and why i think it is going to be whatever the opposite of emerging is demerging i don't think that's a word but, but because of this sentence that more dog said in the patch notes rundown and gotten out sooner sorry about that but the bug is finally fixed and quashed uh so samira should be consistent just like diego and then finally, here was a weird one we caught at the end, uh, but Omnivamp now applies consistency regardless of the source. Uh, affected sources are things like Hacker, Siphoning Winds, Partners in Crime, and Celestial Blessing. Uh, basically, there were weird cases where, for example, uh, they would work with things like Laser Core or Static Shiv that they weren't intended to. Uh, that has been fixed, and so now all Omnivamp across the board behaves the same way. So I don't know if he is guarantee saying what I think he's saying, but if you do not know, the lasers that laser core units shoot proc off of Omnivamp. So if you have Hacker in, then guess what? I mean, most of the time, if you don't have Fiddlesticks and you don't have Mordekaiser, you're going to be playing, you know, a board that looks something like this. Where's Ash? You know, you're going to be playing a board that looks something, something like this. And the reason why it's super easy to stabilize around a board like this is because Zed is so easy to, uh, or it's like, he's really hard to kill because of the fact that, you know, he's getting duelist stacks. He's already like an assassin type unit. He drops aggro all the time. If you have edge of night, you basically have to kill him twice. If you can uh, fill him with tank items and, you know, get a, la a bunch of laser core drones on him, and he's not only going to be healing up from how much damage he does as like just a general AD unit, but he also heals a lot of HP from the laser core drones when they do that really hefty uh, flat magic damage. So now in this world where he's saying that it's actually a bug that laser core procs uh, Omnivamp, that means he's not going to be healing from the laser core drones, which I feel like is half the reason why this comp is strong in the first place, because you abuse that sort of mechanic. Um, so yeah, if it is true that that aspect of this comp is removed, then it's going to be significantly weaker. 
and they also you know nerfed they also nerfed the comp somewhat making it a 3579 not saying that that itself is a nerf but if you look at the numbers then the numbers in in general are lower than what the numbers were in the previous meta because they also wanted to slightly nerf the comp so this is now the second nerf in a row and even if uh, they were able to still heal drones with Omnivamp, you know, they would be already taking a pretty big hit. But again, if it is true that they cannot heal with, you know, drone damage, then yeah, that's going to be a massive hit. I mean, Gunblade is such a extremely strong item in this meta. And you can put Gunblade on literally any single laser core unit, and it's always going to give you lots of value because of the amount of healing that you get with the drones. So... Now, yeah, Gunblade is going to be a lot less flexible item in this meta, or like in this comp. Uh, it's going to be, people are not going to know exactly how to play around it because of the rework to uh, the trait thresholds. And yeah, I just think it's going to be in general overall worse than, you know, Samira boards and, and like Belveth boards. Thanks for watching this video. I'm looking forward to playing the new Gadgetine rework on the patch. Let me know what you're looking forward to playing, and I'll see you in the next one.